Great organization. Can't wait to untangle those later. <laughs> All right, we've got the goods. Boom. Look at my new yard. Shit is so sick. My little oasis. Damn, this has some good light back here. We're going to work. Welcome to uh, something resembling a day in the life of a geologist. I'm a PhD student and I do a combination of field geology and laboratory and I guess like computational work. That, that gives me way more credit than I should get. Uh, but it's a long process and today I'm gonna show you some, some, some of the lab stuff, at least the sample preparation steps. Pretty fun, chilling. Walking to work. Just realized that I'm wearing brown on brown. <laughs> You've seen in other videos, maybe. I think I talked about hanging, how I like to hang in the morning. Walking from my new apartment, there's this little jungle gym. It gives me a good opportunity to stop by every morning. The almighty Gould Simpson. Damn, my desk is so f***ing dirty. <laughs> These lights come on eventually. It's not always this dark in here. We don't have a window, however. <laughs> no, no problem. First thing on the agenda this morning is to read a paper, piece of scientific literature. Kind of get the, I like to do, read a short paper uh, occasionally, right in the morning, get the brain operating in the right, you know, get in the right headspace. Just check my email. Chance and I are planning logistics for our next Andes field season. If you haven't checked out those videos, go check it out. In one of them, we mention our friend Pablo Tognoli, who hooked us up with that awesome Toyota Hilux, that white truck we were in. We are in communication. Looks like we will be able to get the same truck. Psyched. But yeah, we'll go back there this winter. More hot content coming out of the Andes. Let's see, we're gonna read this paper by Sean Willett and Mark Brandon on steady states in mountain belts. I just read this paper, very interesting, a fast read and very helpful definitions. For the non-geologists out there, the first sentence of the introduction is, is uh, very digestible. Willett says, <clears throat> quote, the high elevation of active convergent mountain belts represents a balance between the tectonic processes that create topography and the erosional surface processes that destroy it. And so without getting into the details, uh, this paper was basically focused on, if you think of a mountain belt as um, a location on earth where you're shoving material uh, into a system via convergent plate tectonics, um, the higher relief or higher topography that you build, uh, the greater amount of erosion that you have. And that, that would be uh, something like a flux steady state where the amount of material that you jam into a convergent mountain belt is equal to the amount that's eroded off the top of it. And so he goes into a lot more stuff having to do with the thermal state of the crust and, and the effect that has on the techniques that I use and that people in my in, uh, department use low temperature thermochronology, but very helpful. All right, I'm back outside. Maybe you've noticed today, I'm feeling insanely tired. <laughs> the energy might be very low right now. So to make uh, myself feel better, I'm going to Cafe Luce right now across on the other side of campus to get a cup of black coffee. 
All right, I got some coffee. <laughs> working away, last hour or so I've been working. Um, I just pulled this up to show you what I'm looking at, uh, or at least the region I'm looking at. This is something I've talked about on the channel before, the Little Belt Mountains of Central Montana, Western Interior USA. I have a manuscript here that clearly has uh, some work to be done on it before it's submitted to a journal, hopefully in the coming month or two. So I'm working on this for an hour and uh, just doing my thing, you know? Work and finish my coffee, having fun. We're gonna go in the lab soon, but until then, peace. I'm gonna do a little bit of mineral separation here. We have a, a very long and somewhat tedious sequence of steps that we take to go from a bulk rock, which is sampled off of an outcrop, uh, in this case in the, in the South Central Andes. And I'm at a stage right now where I have a crushed rock, essentially sand, and the step now is to separate out dense minerals. And so this is the first of two main steps uh, that we refer to as heavy liquid density separation. So I'm gonna be taking this sample, uh, which has already undergone uh, separation via magnetic susceptibility. And so the magnetic minerals, most of them have been removed from this sample. And the step now is to essentially use uh, this heavy liquid known as acetylene tetrabromide. And it allows more dense minerals to settle through, through the liquid um, and we collect those. Within that separate, we'll have accessory minerals that we're interested in for geo and thermochronology. We'll see some of the steps as we go. Let's do it. away here I have my sample uh, ready for TBE here we have our TBE in the separation flask and we're gonna add this sample into the top stir it uh, three times with 15 minute intervals between each stir uh, in between each of those stirs we let uh, some of this sample through once the density separation has occurred uh, and then we have our, our dense appetites and zircons caught in a filter paper. Um, I'll show you what this looks like under the fume hood. I added my sample to the top of the separation funnel and it's actively separating. So check this out. Almost uh, the entirety of the sample is the mineral quartz. It's non-magnetic and uh, it's relatively low density compared to these other minerals. So it's gonna separate out a lot of that stuff. And we'll see when we come back uh, just how much it gets concentrated at the top. I'll let a little bit of uh, TBE through and I'm collecting my accessory minerals in the filter paper below. So I can use some of this free time to prepare our little origami packets for these things. This is weighing paper, and this is a great way to store minerals because they don't stick to it. And there's a fun little technique here, shout out to Gilby Jepson, where you can make neat little packets. And I'm gonna run through this really quick. Maybe a little bit too much coffee, but I'm basically doing a little origami here. To make a storage container there's some intermediate steps here you get a feel for this stuff it's a very diverse uh, job we have so i curled over the corners basically curled the lip and that little guy tucks under there and look at that a little origami packet which will hold my tbe heavies very important so I'll take, a, I'll take a marker and we're working, very important to keep track of your samples. We're working on sample MERS 5200.
and in this packet when we're done it's going to be containing our tbe heavies down dense minerals baby currently waiting for our sample to be done let's check out it <laughs> so if we check on this sample you see all that quartz at the top it's working just let our first little bit of tbe through and re-stirred and now i have another 15 minutes i'm gonna go see what chance is up to boys chance hello i came to check on you guys looking at some maps yeah we're wondering what you're doing planning our next andy's field season hell yeah buddy i said i just said i stirred some tbe and said i'm gonna go see what chance is doing because <laughs> they know you on the channel hey guys who you don't know however <laughs> is rob oh, no. rob stay calm <laughs> the thing about vlogging is that i Good. only I edit it so I only include things that make you look cool. Oh, okay. Well, I'm, you just have to cut all of this out then. What, <laughs> what do you do for your PhD, brother? Um, so I've generally, been, uh, I've been working on the fluvial succession of Triassic North America. So if you turn your attention to this slightly confusing diagram, that what I'm studying is a paleo river that ran from mountains that now live in Texas to. Um, a big pile of muddy sediments that are now preserved in northwestern Nevada. Stir number two is down, so 30 minutes, maybe 35 minutes in. Uh, chilling in the lab, about to go do some work during this next 15 minute increment. You can see clean TDE accumulating, being filtered through the filter paper. I'm listening to some all right so i've been talking a lot about mineral separation i got to give you a little bit more of a rundown here and how this thing uh how we get to the step that we're doing today in the laboratory the very first step that I mentioned earlier is to strategically sample a rock uh, from the outcrop with a rock hammer, break it off. In our case, you ship those rocks home from the Andes. Uh, we then crush it using a jaw crusher, a big thing that crushes it up into gravel or pebble-sized material. We then pulverize it. This basically creates a sand. There's a step in here where you, uh, you use a sieve to get out particles that are less than 425 microns uh, in size. A step I haven't talked about yet is this Wolfley density separation. Uh, this is basically similar to stream and river processes that separate sediments by density. You add your sample here, the table is shaking at a specific angle, and you collect your denser minerals down here. A lot of magnetics and quartz gets through here. We then move to the fronds where a big magnet, we utilize a big magnet and a specific angle on this chute as well to collect uh, non-magnetics down here. Like I said, a lot of quartz comes through as well. And then after the fronds, after that thing is dried, we move over to the step we're doing today. I won't talk about methylene iodide today. We're doing TBE. This is where we're getting uh, separation via heavy liquids. And so this is the step we're on today. Um, and then in theory, after you run through MI, you yield apatite and zircon our accessory minerals of interest. All right, just got out of the lab. I'm heading to a seminar. I have three minutes to move a little ways across campus. I'm going to a once a week seminar called Cosmochronology. And we're gonna be talking about meteorites and some various radiometric dating techniques that we use or that others use to determine the age uh, and origin of early solar system materials. <clears throat> I'll show you the results of the lab work, generally a success, um, but yeah, we're going to class. Peace out. Oh, you do? No, absolutely yeah, not. You do. <laughs> but <laughs> but I, want, I want to show... <laughs> I just want to show... Have it for my own benefit. <laughs> <laughs> for scale. What the go, bro? <laughs> Jeez, in a So here they're using samarium 144 as a proxy for that extinct radionuclide. The radiogenic 
daughter normalized to a non-radiogenic daughter. But as ionic radius decreases, uh, elements become more compatible in the garnet structure and are preferentially incorporated. Just got out of cosmochemistry. Every once in a while during my during my whole grad school experience, but a lot during my PhD, I've left certain lectures and just felt like so insanely grateful uh, that I'm a student and that I have access to the minds that I do uh, and the teaching resources. Just a very inspiring class. First, the homie Chance gave a nice presentation, killed it, uh, talking about some Angrite dating using various isotopic systems, rubidium strontium, samarium neodymium, and lutetium hafnium. Bunch of crazy stuff you don't need to worry about. And then one of our instructors, Mauricio, gave a talk on isochrons and kind of the future of dating uh, minerals in general. It was incredibly inspiring and we got to touch and hold some meteorites. So it was just great. Shout out to Jess Barnes as well, who's uh, one of the professors. I'll go back in the lab briefly and show you the results of my mineral separation. And then I'm gonna go home uh, and I'll take you along for the ride. You'll see that compared to the sample I put in there, we have a significantly smaller amount. What we have here are TBE heavies. And it, honestly, it's hard to see, but believe it or not, that is a relatively significant amount of uh, zircon and apatite, presumably, hopefully. And so that's what we end up with. And then you just put it in this little origami packet and it's ready for the next phase. Currently walking home. It's pretty early, it's just after four o'clock but I have a gala dinner to prepare for. <laughs> Little scholarship celebration. One thing that usually deters me from working out, particularly road running, is high winds. And it's incredibly windy in Tucson, Arizona today. But I'm gonna go for a run because I know it'll make me feel better uh, just with the wind in my face. <laughs> but get some sun, a lot, as you may have seen, a lot of the time I spend in the office, in my office and the lab, uh, I don't get a lot of exposure to the sun. So I always try to get to work early, leave early, um, and that way I can get some serious sun exposure in the evenings. Back at my house now, undisclosed location, just moved in, so psyched. Maybe I'll give you a tour of my crib someday, but the, this light, wow, I didn't make my bed. This light in the afternoons is dreamy as hell. I've got all these nice plants out here. I don't think this is too much information to put online, but I've got some nice plants, nice fresh air in the mornings and evenings. But just got home. Um, I'm not gonna show you my whole house right now. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go take a jog, see how it feels. Nice and slow. Great day so far. I hope you are enjoying this. <laughs> All right, just got home. Evidence. Take these off. You can get a feel for my nice Irish uh, post-run skin. Nice and blotchy. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, pretty chill. 3.57 miles cruising super windy my mouth is incredibly dry but solid little exercise um i have less than 45 minutes to get dressed and go to this dinner where i'm meeting amelia my friend and rob who you met earlier and so i'm gonna go take a shower get dressed i believe i have to tuck in my shirt back in I am dressed for the gala. What do you think? Hanging out, running extremely late, but I found my blue button down, wearing a backpack, and it's time to go. I've got my black shoes on, and we're gonna go meet up with some friends. Cutting it close.
damn, I must have walked like 30,000 steps today. <laughs> this is the last entry I'll make before the venue, so uh, see you there, I guess. Wish me luck. <laughs> the main strip of UA. It's a nice campus indeed. People are playing around. In support for research and kind of in general, All right, the event is over. Actually back in Gould Simpson, <laughs> the building where it all began today. And the light is just as bad, but we're gonna go get a Bev. It'll be the final cap of a long day. Hey everybody, we have to do a toast because I'm finishing a vlog right now. So. I, don't, I don't have beer. That's okay. <laughs> bop bop. Chillin'. All right, everybody, I just got home. It's just past 10, but it feels like two in the morning. <laughs> that is a busy day in the life of Caden. I hope that you enjoyed following along. I hope that if you're an undergraduate student interested in research, these are helpful. I hope that if you're a science enthusiast, you find these things interesting. And I really appreciate the support on YouTube. Like, share with your friends, comment, subscribe and uh, it was really fun. So thanks for listening. Keep your eye out for more videos and I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace out. Hey, I heard they got nice cars up in heaven. Free liquor out the bar and the brightest fucking stars up in heaven. Heard that you can chill, not worry about the police. Not worry about someone fighting cause everything's just a piece. Heard the streets pay with gold, the women all gorgeous. You just float, can't even feel where the floor is. I heard heaven got a brand new venue. Next to that restaurant, you love their menu. And everything's free, so everyone cool, look out anyway.